What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to JBox Studios, your home for reviews, reactions, and of course, ridiculousness. And I was able to check out finally a much anticipated sequel that has been pushed off and delayed since last year the highly anticipated A Quiet Place Part. Two. Following the deadly events at home, the Abat family must now face the terrors of the outside world as they are forced to venture into the unknown. So is this second installment a perfect sequel to the first film? Let's find out. But before I get into my thoughts, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Pros, cons, theories, anything, let me know down there because I'm curious what you all thought about this one. But without further ado, let's get into some of the good. Okay, A Quiet Place 1. The tension and sound was the biggest thing. They take that concept in this sequel and ramp up the tension even more. Like, this is essentially holding a fart in during a funeral type tension in this movie because the whole time they're trying to have to be quiet and whatnot. But the way that they crafted these sections of essentially kind of laying these breadcrumbs here or there and then it kind of leading, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes down the road of the kind of conflict that these characters are having to deal with. But you see how it was kind of spelled out to begin with. So I loved how those were crafted again ramping up the tension but the way that it was shot and kind of story structured almost of each of these kind of smaller pieces or problems that the characters had to deal with in this movie like i absolutely loved what they did here but reeling it back a quiet place one the sound a Quiet Place 2, the sound. I think what they did here with kind of the combination of, again, score and complete silence was wonderful. Like, this is what makes this essentially franchise so far of dealing with kind of the, hey, when do we drop out the sound? When do we make the audience really kind of feel the tension that these characters are dealing with? And I thought that they handled that fairly well, but they even, I feel like, ramped it up even more where the camera is following one character and then it's through kind of like an action scene and then jumps to another character but we drop out the sound so it's like big loud noise action and whatnot and then complete silence as you're seeing it from this character's point of view which i thought was phenomenal because that is what made this movie so essentially interesting to put us in the place or the ears essentially the lifestyle of these characters who are deaf that you know, are dealing with the same things that these other people are dealing with. So I thought that what they did and how they handled the sound and crafted it in this movie was superior to the first film. And this all brings me to the acting in this movie. Obviously, Emily Blunt coming back. She is fantastic. I absolutely adored what she had to do in this movie. And again, ramping up that tension. And again, adding out or kind of adding or expanding the cast a little bit, bringing in Killian Murphy as well, I thought was a nice component of showing a little bit of the before, how that person or character has uh, evolved through this end of the world kind of scenario and whatnot. So I loved how they brought back characters that we had seen, expanded a little bit, but I think that the two main children actors of Noah Judd, I believe, and then Millicent Simmons, hopefully I'm pronouncing her correct, her name correctly, I think both of them far superior from the first movie. They each could hold their own. They each had spotlights in this movie. They had times to shine, and I think that, again, they held their own. They were the main set piece or the main focus of certain scenes, certain uh, conflicts, essentially. And I think that they were far superior than any other, not any other, but a lot of other children performances that I've seen recently. I think that they held their own, and I'm very curious to see what their future holds in, you know, the acting sphere and whatnot. So I thought that they were a nice added spotlight of this movie. But one of the biggest things, and almost cherry on top, that I cannot forget about to talk about is the world building that they did in this movie. The first one is this farm are these people, a family, and kind of showing one or two of these creatures. This one is expanding outward and showing more of the world, fleshing it out from different locations, how many of these monsters are essentially out there, and other groups of people, and how people have essentially evolved or de-evolved into kind of these monsters, these just 
scavengers essentially in this world this post-apocalyptic world so i loved how they they did this they're like we're gonna expand it out a little bit and show some more of what is happening in this world so i thought that that was much appreciated of taking the lore that krasinski essentially built up in the first one and then fleshing it out into kind of a bigger world that we've seen however getting into the cons uh, this is a very small one it's kind of the counterpoint of what i just said in the good of the world expansion i wish that we would have gotten more of that because a lot of it is again focused on the same core family just kind of moving a few miles essentially i wish that we would have gotten more of kind of different communities different people how these different people are dealing with these essentially alien creatures and whatnot i will say there's probably a third one that's all I'm going to say, so I am not going to ding it that much, but I do wish that we would have seen a little bit more of the world and how people are really coping with everything. Overall, A Quiet Place Part 2 is a what a sequel should be doing in this case with it again ramping up the tension great performances the sound design and where to play sound and not to play sound was the best part with the world expansion me wanting a little bit more from that i would recommend highly recommend checking out quiet place part two if you've seen the first one like the first one you're getting even more of that but better ramped up if you're a fan of that hell even a fan of the last of us video games go and watch this movie because this has very similar bones to those games cannot recommend this one higher in closing i'm going to give a quiet place part two 4.5 out of five Shh. so what did you all think of a quiet place 2 did you love it did you hate it are you like ugh, i don't know about this or are there crazy theories that you have and things that we missed i want to know in the comments down below let me know because i loved this movie especially in the theater setting um anyways though as always thank you so much for watching watch some more videos up there or right over there you know brand new content every single week here on the jbuck studios channel be sure to check out my tiktok down below and then my also jbuck shorts youtube channel i'm doing a bunch of small bite-sized content over there go and check that out and give that a subscribe please 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 like this video subscribe to the jbuck studios channel and until next time we'll see you later